Here's a little trivia for you. Not even sure if, if Obi knows this, but we have a couple things in common. First of all, we were born in the same hospital. How about that? St. Joseph's in Highland. Just a few years apart, of course. And we're the only two people in this room tonight with a 1982 Cardinals World Series ring. Now, I got one as a broadcaster. He got one as a player. Probably deserved a little more than I did, but uh, we both have it. And I suspect that's where the comparison ends. Ken was a product of Collinsville High School and Junior College All-American at Belleville Area Junior College. Obi went on to a major league career, well, it was only 16 years with several teams. Eight of those years with the Cardinals. Consistent? Oh, yeah. With the Cardinals, he never hit below 289 or above 303. In the 1982 World Championship season, he led the National League third baseman in fielding. In the 82 World Series against Milwaukee, he hit 292 with seven hits, scored four runs, and drove in a pair. He was part of one of the best defensive infields in the history of the game. Listen to this. Overfield at third base. Ozzie Smith at short. Tommy Hur at second. And Keith Hernandez at first. It just doesn't get any better than that. He also played with Atlanta, Pittsburgh, and San Francisco. He led the majors in pinch hits one season with the Giants. After his playing career, Ken spent 16 years as a minor league manager with the New York Mets. Man, did he have some bus rides. Now he's back home as a hitting coach with the Gateway Grizzlies. I hope those players know how fortunate they are to have Ken as a coach. And we are fortunate tonight to induct Ken Obergfell in the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you, Ron. So I'm going to mo ask the uh, most obvious question in the world. As you're a kid in Maryville, Illinois, and playing at, uh, at Collinsville and playing in college, uh, as, as you're playing, what are you dreaming? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I would think that the dream was well, to play for the Cardinals and win a world championship with the Cardinals. Actually, that's what it was. I mean, people say, you know, when you're growing up, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I said I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player. And God bless God that it, it happened for me. And uh, I was very happy with my career. And... You know, didn't want to be a police or a fireman, so it was baseball or school was out of the question. <laughs> Obi, you had played a lot before Whitey got here. What, what changed in your career when Whitey arrived on the scene? Well, I went to third base, obviously, and which was probably a good thing for my career. Uh, Tommy Herr, who is probably one of the best defensive second basemen to ever play the game, was ready to come up. And I was ready to move to a new position. Uh, third base was a lot easier than second. And Whitey told me, he goes, you know, Obi, I want you to know, I want, I want to move you to third base to make room for Tommy. And I said, that's fine, but don't expect, expect Mike Schmidt numbers. I'm not going to hit 50 home <laughs> runs. I'm not going to drive in 100 runs, but I'll catch the ball for you. And uh, you caught it. Ozzie caught it. Tommy caught it. Keith caught it. Ron said one of the best defensive infields. I was in a meeting with Whitey a couple weeks ago. He thinks it's the best defensive infield in the history of the game. What do you think? I think it is, too. I'm not saying that because I was part of it, but uh, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think all four of us led our position in fielding that year. So we all should have won gold gloves, but, you know, Keith and Ozzie did, which they won it all the time, and Keith made our job easy because all we had to do was get it in the area code and Keith would catch it at first base. So uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I enjoyed my years here. Yeah, what was your, what, what is your strongest memory of the playoff run in 82, whether it's the playoffs or the World Series? Well, I guess two, one, in game two of the playoffs against Atlanta, I got to walk off base hit to win that game two. But I guess my big highlight of my career was watching Bruce Suter, who's one of my real close friends and talks about, you know, his fastball, which he doesn't have. You know, <laughs> he's got a great split finger, but uh, a big highlight, probably the biggest highlight was watching him throw his, his hard fastball <laughs> past Gorman Thomas. 87 for the, miles an hour, yeah, right? Yeah, 87, throwing <laughs> it past Gorman Thomas for strike three, and we were the world champs. It's amazing when you look back at that team. Willie coaching with the Cardinals now. George Hendrick has had a long coaching career in Major League Baseball. Uh, Keith Hernandez is a broadcaster. Ozzy helps out with spring training. Tommy Hurd did a little bit of managing. You did a lot of coaching. 
how did that come about that all of you guys from that team wound up being teachers of the game at, at some level? Whitey Herzog. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, playing for Whitey, he, he kept us in games. You know, when we weren't playing that day or something, if we were getting a day off, we were watching the game. What would we do if we were managing in this situation? And, you know, Whitey, by far, I played for a lot of good managers, but he was the uh, top of the list. And now, you, as mentioned, you're back here after a long career in baseball and uh, like a, a, base, a veteran baseball person, a lot of traveling around, but now uh, working with the Grizzlies and helping out some of those kids. Uh, it, it's great. I mean, I enjoy, you know, I enjoy it. It was a lot of fun. I know the owner, Rich Sojay Jr., pretty well, uh, Steve Dombrick, the GM. Uh, these guys, you know, I went to Rich and asked, you know, do you got any openings? I'll, I'll be Grizzly if you want me to be. I just wanted to get back in. <laughs> I just want to, kind of wanted to get back in the game, and uh, Rich said, oh, yeah, we'll get you a spot on, the, on our staff. And, but I also told him I didn't want to make the long trips. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right. <laughs> One last thing. I want to go back to the beginning of this. D does it ever, does, uh, in the fall during World Series time or uh, on an event like this, do you ever think, man, I, I was able to live my childhood dream? Yeah, I do. Uh, and I did live my childhood dream. Uh, you know, my dream was to be a Cardinal. I became a Cardinal, won a world championship in St. Louis. Uh, love this area. Got to get my boys and my people back there and back to Maryville because they're not used to being out this late. <laughs> but uh, it's, it was definitely a dream. It's been a dream for me, and I've been blessed through my career. So uh, this is awesome. It's great to have you here, and it's a pleasure to welcome you into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Ken Oberfell, everybody. Yeah, Obi, by the way, it's 10 after 9, probably past your bedtime, maybe. I don't know.